We shall open our Bible to John 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13. Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus is saying that there's no greater love than the love he should by laying down his life for his friends. Which you are just read now. And these friends of Jesus have been predestined from their mother's womb. And so he had loved them even while they were yet in their mother's womb. What a privilege. And who are these friends of Jesus? They are the ones who do whatever he commands them to do. They are the ones, I repeat, who do whatever he commands them to do. This we shall read in John 15, verse 14. John 15, verse 14. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. So who are the friends of Jesus here now? Those who do what? That is, those who obey this truth that are being taught. They are the friends of Jesus. And the thoughts of Jesus towards his friends, whom he loves, are always thoughts of peace and never of evil to give them an expected end. That is, I repeat, the thoughts of Jesus towards his friends, whom he loves, who are doing his commandments, or obeying this truth, are thoughts of peace and not of evil. And all things, we work out together for their good. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The Lord Jesus is talking here to his friends. He said, I know the thoughts where they think towards you. Not thoughts of peace, oh. not of evil at all. Whatever you are passing through. Romans 8 now, verse 28. Romans 8. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. The friends of Jesus are the called. They are the called according to the divine purpose of God. And they also love Jesus. So all things that they are passing through will eventually work together for good for them. And Jesus Nana assures his friends that he lost, that whatever they ask his father in his name, they shall receive it. John 15, 16b. John 15, 16b. 16b. Whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name, he may give it you. What an assurance. That friends of Jesus, when they ask the Father anything in the name of Jesus, he will give it to them. But believers in Christ who are in friendship with the world are not the friends of Jesus. 
Rather, they are his enemies. And so cannot ask the father anything in his name. James 4.4. 4. James 4.4. 4. James 4 verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Whosoever will be a friend of the world is who? Enemy of God. So these enemies of God cannot say Jesus loves them. I cannot ask the Father anything in the name of Jesus, except they repent and come out of the world. That they may be a friend of Jesus. And we must know today that Jesus Christ also loves Christian gospel church. That's why he made that to know the hidden truths in the Bible. Now, because of the law, which is okay, gave for the church, that's why he revealed deep secrets of the Bible to them. So that they will enter him. And so the message this morning is from him 38. Him 38. Sansa 1 and the chorus. I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. So glad that Jesus lost even me. Who oh, am I? So that is the message this morning. Jeremiah 31. Verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with everlasting kindness have I drawn thee. From the beginning, God has foreknown believers in Christ. Who shall be of this truth? And so God had loved them, even when they were yet in their mother's wombs. At God's appointed time, those who are of this truth were drawn by God unto Jesus, his son. And thereafter, in his loving kindness towards them, he made them to come unto the knowledge of the truth, which is in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 4, 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. And Jesus now says that no man can come unto him that is unto this truth except the Father who sent him into the world to bear witness unto this truth draw such a man or such a woman unto him. John 644a. John 644a. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Now, let's read what God said about Jacob and Esau in Romans 9. Romans 9, verse 13. Romans 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Jacob and Esau were twins in their mother's womb. Yet, in that womb, God knew whom he loved. And so those of us who are of this truth today, because Jesus has loved us from the beginning, it's just the work of grace. For which we should forever be glad that we are vessels of mercy and vessels of his love right from our mother's womb. And that we should also be glad that we are not vessels fitted or ordained unto eternal destruction like Esau. Or like Judas, about whom Jesus said, it would have been good if Judas had not been born. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 24b. Matthew 26, verse 24b. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. We should also be glad that because of his love for us, he did not harden our hearts against the truth. That's why we should count ourselves a privileged people of God's grace and of mercy and of the love of Jesus towards us. We should also be very glad that Jesus loves us in this church. Hence, he made us to know and to see and to hear of the many truths that are hidden from many righteous men 
and for many prophets. As Jesus said himself in Matthew 13. Eleven and seventeen. Matthew thirteen, verse eleven. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. 17. Verse 17. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Prophets, righteous men, they wish to hear them, desire to hear them, to see these things in the scripture, but they are not able to. For example, through the knowledge of this mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, that it is hidden truths. We have come to know the mind of God and the will of God concerning how marriage or better should be done. Jesus, who was not of this world, out of his love for us, has also made us to know that any ceremony that is worldly is not of God, but is of the devil, who is the prince of this world. From this hidden truth also, which Jesus Christ has given unto us, because he loves us in the church. We have come to know that Christmas, Easter, Valentine, New Year, and the so-called crossover night, and by the celebrations, that they are ungodly. It is this mysteries that Jesus who loves us has made us to know. He has also made us to know that Christmas and Easter celebration is the celebration of another Jesus. And it is another spirit. The spirit of the world. God wants all men to be saved. But that they must come to the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2 4. First Timothy 2 4. First Timothy 2 verse 4. Who we have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. You see how important this truth is? Look at Isaiah 26 2. Isaiah 26 verse 2. Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Open ye the gates. What gates are those? The gates of heaven. The gates to the new Jerusalem. 
we will shall forever live with Jesus. And whom are these gates to be opened to? The righteousness that do what? I give the truth. Many believers in Christ are not saved today because they have not received the love of this truth. A majority of them do not even believe in this truth. Hence, they are eternally damned into hell. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 10 to 12. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be done who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Believers in Christ who have not received the love of this truth, or who do not believe in this truth, cannot say Jesus loves them until they buy the truth. All believers in Christ are commanded to buy the truth. This we shall read in Proverbs 23, 23. Proverbs 23, 23. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. The parable of the ten virgins given by Jesus. All these ten virgins had the lamp of salvation. But the five wise virgins found grace with God. Hence, they bought the truth. And were keeping it, making themselves ready to meet the bridegroom. But the five fully virgins, because they did not buy the truth, they were not ready. And by the time they decided to go and buy the truth, it was too late. And so the door was shut against them. We should have read to remind ourselves of that parable. Matthew 25, 1 to 13. Matthew 25. 1 to 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, 
Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and tripped their lambs. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that say, And buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. What lesson do we learn from this parable? The lesson is that all believers in Christ must buy this truth without delay. Even those who are bought the truth must not sell it so that they can be ready at any time to be caught up in the air to meet Jesus in the rapture. Grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ, which teaches us to give up all things that are not godly, to give up worthy loss, and that we should live so badly, godly and righteously in this present world. That's what grace and truth came to teach us. But Jesus wants all those who have this truth to hold fast to this mystery of the kingdom of heaven, which he has given to them to know. And they should not allow any man to take their crown of life, which he has also given to them. That is the one Jesus God gives to them. Revelation 3, verse 11. Revelation 3, verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That is the warning he's giving to those who are of this truth whom he loves. Hold fast to this hidden truth. Don't allow any man take away your crown. Now, let's read John 15, 9. John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Continue what? Ye in my love. And how do you continue in the love? That is how do you remember the love of Jesus? Look at verse 10 now. Oh, that's in John 15. Verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So if you keep these hidden truths that I've taught you, then you are bad and you are remaining under the banner of my love. Even as he himself kept the hidden truth given to him by his father God, throughout the period of his stay on earth, he was under his father's love. The sin of rebellion or stubbornness to this mystery of the kingdom of heaven which are the commandments of Jesus, can make Jesus not to love such a one again. 
Hosea 9, 15. Hosea 9, verse 15. All their wickedness is in Gilgal. For there I hated them. For the wickedness of their doings, I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. All their princes are revolters. You see, there I do what? I hated them. And I'll do what? I will love them no more because they have committed the sin of stubbornness. We can also come out from under the banner of the Lord Jesus when we go back to the world after you have known this truth. So, to come from under the banner of love is what we are talking about. It could be when we commit sin willfully. After all, I receive none of this truth. Or when we now become lukewarm in the teeth of God. May God help us to remain under the banner of God's love. Hear the sound of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are indeed very glad that you love us. Even before we were formed in our mother's womb, you have foreknown us. And you have predestined us to be partakers of your love. Lord, we are grateful for this great love that you have shown to us. us. Lord, we are grateful to you that at your own appointed time, you drew us unto your son, Jesus. And having come to you through your son, you revealed the knowledge of this truth to us. And you gave us the grace to obey this truth making us your friends indeed. For this, O oh Lord, we remain eternally grateful to you. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, having bought this truth, help us, O oh Lord, to always remain in obedience, living godly, soberly and righteously in this present world. Make us wise virgins indeed, that we will not only have the oil of salvation, but we will also have the oil of this truth in our vessel, so that as we live continually in obedience to this truth, we will be made fit and ready for the rapture. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, deliver us from Satan. May Satan not take this crown of eternal life from us by making us to live in rebellion and stubbornness to the truth. Lord, may you not cast us away. May you not hate us. May we not be like Judas. May we not be like Esau. May our hearts not be hardened against this truth like Pharaoh. May we not be vessels fitted for destruction. But keep us, O oh Lord, even in the hollow of your hands. Deliver us from the tempter. 
may he not succeed to make us to fall, so that having done all, we will stand. And on the day of reckoning, we will receive our reward and our crown. When the bridegroom shall come, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, Father, may we be among those who will love your appearing. Mighty God, hear and answer this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray.